Hello, welcome. My name is Sam. This is a reading today for Gemini. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Gemini, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one, so you will see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the map shifter on the split. And the messenger of fire at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so the map shifter is talking about change of plans. The map is changing. The future uh, projection is shifting. <clears throat> because of that, it's like that needs to be made known. I want to say the messenger of fire is talking about delivering that message or receiving that message. I want to say that you perhaps are this messenger character here. It's like, or perhaps this is, this is the past in the sense that you have known that there's a big shift to the map. The map be, it could be, you know, the landscape. It could be, um, you know, the political landscape or the social landscape or, you know, however that might apply. There's a big change of plans that perhaps you've had some foresight on, which makes a lot of sense here for what's already on the table because it's like, because you've held this knowledge or this intuition, maybe you've just had a knowing, um, you've made some excellent choices for yourself and, and you're exceptionally prepared. So the messenger of fire, if this has been kind of a frustrating position for you, a bit of a Cassandra energy in the sense of, you, you have a glimpse of the future, but nobody's really believing you. Nobody's making the choices that would put them in, in a good position. It's kind of like, I feel like whatever it is that you had a, a, an awareness of seems to be kind of playing out now. So you're no longer the messenger of fire. You're shifting into a different position because... Um, because when you're walking into that experience now, it's all playing out. There's no need to communicate it. So your position is changing. Okay, uh, overall energy from the Zen Tarot. I was trying to get a sense of what your new position would be. Your new position seems to be kind of like the navigator of the new map in a sense. It's like you're the driver. You're the one kind of being put in charge of, um, I'll just show you the last card here. It's the slow and steady, which is a bit of a chariot energy, right? I'm, I don't know if, if that's obvious, but to me it's a chariot energy, even though it's a snail, maybe because of the snail hand card and another deck, which hasn't been in play for a while, but um, it's like you're, you're being put in the driver's seat because whatever is happening, however, what's playing out now is proof that you've known for some time. And so you, it's clear to everybody involved now that you have foresight and that you should be in the driver's position, right? So your position is changing from messenger to kind of navigator. Navigator of the new map. Okay, overall energy from Zen Tarot. Integration. I think this is the world card. It's looking to me actually like every, like it's all coming together, right? That's what the integration is. So it's almost like What it's showing me is that these aspects of you are coming together. This messenger of fire and this, this navigator energy are coming together now to, um, it's okay. Basically it's, it's almost like it's, um, correcting me in the sense that I was saying the messenger of fire is, is now past energy and you're now moving into this navigational position being a, a bit of a leader perhaps or guide you're being listened to, but it's it's wanting to blend all of that together. Integration, it's all coming together. It's not that 
it's trading one for the other. It's an accumulation. So you're adding two, which makes sense here actually with these two, first two cards giving a little bit of a different perspective on these first two cards. Um, Feast of Plenty, Choices and Their Consequences, and the Six of Earth. The choices that you, you have made excellent choices, like I said, that have put you in the Six of Earth energy, which is coming through today as prime position, perfect positioning. You're in a, a great space or great, the context for the unfolding of, of, Something that I want to say is moving the collective that came through a reading last week. I think this kind of emotional upswell of the collective that's here again on the table. It's like emotions are high because are going to be high because something is playing out. I want to say on the world stage, um, but it's affecting at least you and your family or you and your community really personally, right? Okay, the reason why I'm saying all that, sorry, let, let me get back to the integration aspect. The integration is also coming up in this card here with all of this kind of accumulation of, it could be resources. Maybe you've gathered resources. Maybe you're a prepper, right? And you're prepared for some sort of world event that could be perhaps challenging, yet you're prepared. Could be kind of uh, physical resources in some form, but it could just be kind of emotional and spiritual fortitude because you've known for some time that this change was coming. And so, like I said, you're absolutely prepared. You've integrated, you've integrated every aspect that would be, um, that you knew in advance would be beneficial in this, as this movement rolls through the collective. Okay. So, I want to say maybe it's a coming awareness more than anything. I mean, it's it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. There's like storm and flood energy here. There's kind of maybe sky event type stuff. Uh, sky phenomenon. Sky phenomenon. Maybe sky phenomenon that is actually affecting like weather systems in the environment. Maybe that's why the map shifter energy is coming up. It's almost like there's earth change elements. It's coming through. Okay, this is the interesting thing. It's coming through kind of visually with those types of images, storms, floods, earth changes, sky events. But I want to say that all of those symbols and metaphors and such are just communication of the underlying information or message, which is basically, I want to say, um, it could be an actual real world, world phenomenon, like I said, like a sky event that alters the emotional state of the planet. That makes sense too, although the moon isn't here on the table unless this is, unless this can be seen as the moon here through the through the wall, through the obstacle there, that could be the moon kind of peeking through there. The reason why I'm bringing up the moon is because the moon I, I generally is understood as impacting or having a cause and effect relationship with the collective emotional state, right? Or the collective psychic well-being. Okay, so you're in a great position for this thing that is, like I said, something happening on the world stage That is coming through visually. Okay, first of all, we've got the rescue. We've got strength. This is you in your position of strength. The rescue card is talking about maybe somebody close to you that you've been trying to communicate this message to that is now in, a, in some form uh, in a position of needing to be rescued. And then the wall or the obstacle. Okay, so the fascinating thing about this was when I lined these cards up, when these cards came out on the table in front of me, the thing that drew me in was this. And it was kind of in the Pisces reading too, right? Pisces was being encouraged to do something, act now. It's it, it, the time to do is now. And they were absolutely refusing to budge from their position because it's a good position perhaps. It's the ideal position. And unbeknownst to everybody in the room, including the Pisces, something was about to 
kind of cross their path. In the Pisces reading, it was kind of like a, a locomotive flying by, right? It's like, see, if we had moved when, when you were all demanding we move, we would have got mucked by that train, something like that. But so it's interesting to me that this is now again, kind of coming in as something, something flying by in a sense. And that's the reason why, and of course, with all this imagery here that I'm kind of tying it into a possible sky phenomenon. I know there's been an incredible increase of like UFO activity. If you, if you pay attention to that community or those types of news stories, it's, exceptionally on the rise basically okay so because of that because something is something is passing through the psyche of the collective and it is how do i characterize it it's something like it's so far out that there was never is the reason why you weren't believed or it's the reason why nobody's prepared because it's so far out it's it's too far out there to be believed or it's too far out there to think that it could ever be it's like it maybe it's a possibility but nobody believed it could actually be true so because of that because of this whatever it is, you're in a position of strength because you're prepared, because you've made a perfect choices in a sense, or, or ideal choices. You've made good choices because you had a knowing or a suspicion that maybe this wasn't that far out there, that maybe this was a possibility. Maybe this is kind of conspiracy theory type stuff. Some sort of a conspiracy, what was thought to be a conspiracy theory is now kind of landing in reality and showing itself. It's something that is far out there, but is now up close and personal, kind of in everybody's life. If it's not kind of literally impacting their personal space or their personal relationships, what am I trying to say? It's like, I wanna say that it's, it's something that the entire collective is experiencing because it's like an event on the world stage that even if it's not kind of happening in your own backyard, the news of it or the awareness of it or its implications, the, the, the fact that this has kind of landed in a sense, this really far out there idea has actually landed in the manifest world that it can't be denied anymore. The prediction or the prophecy was true in some form. The conspiracy was not a conspiracy. And now because of that, it's impacting everybody on a personal level, right? Some being kind of their, their strength being kind of recognized or benefited from, right? Because they're prepared or because they're, because they're prepared or because Okay, because the choices that were made in the past have consequences in this now moment. Because of a past choice, because of past choices, you see the two swords here, right? There's, it's an, in a sense, there were like two choices. Because of, two, because of one of two choices, you picked one or the other, so did everybody apparently. Because of that, you are now either in the strength position or in the rescue position, needing rescue. Okay, so, and then the wall and the come together card coming next. This was looking to me actually a bit like your space actually really fortified your, your world, your emotions, your, your psyche, your consciousness is incredibly strong and fortified because of choices you made in the past, or maybe just because of awarenesses or foresight or vision that you've had in the past. Things that are happening now aren't necessarily throwing you off balance. It's not a surprise to you. You knew it was coming for a long time, something like that. Okay. It's not, okay. And the thing is, it's not that, I, I don't want to, I'm not getting any sense here that there's like devastation. That's not what this is talking about. Maybe kind of intellectual devastation. That's what I'm trying to get through here. All of these symbols and metaphors that are used to communicate big ideas like this, 
um, are really to just, they're kind of representing the, maybe it's the shifting intellectual or emotional landscape because of an awareness coming in, right? But it's, it's being shown to us in really kind of physical terms as if it's almost something like, you know, a, a planet flies by in the sky, right? For everybody to see. And so that is, that alters our understanding of our position in, on the map or in the universe, right? It's shifting our perspective profoundly because of that there's all this kind of emotional upheaval there's all this you see what i'm saying there's all this um feeling like like not literally needing rescue but needing assistance maybe just to navigate this paradigm shift you see what i'm saying so with the walls and the come together card it was talking to me about how at least one other, I want to say it's like, there's one specific somebody in your life that is wanting to be with you at this moment, right? It's it, this come together card. It's almost like, it's almost like a gathering at your home, a gathering around your energy because you're Cassandra, right? Because you've been saying something along these lines from their perspective. It's like, weren't you Weren't you talking about, haven't you been saying something like this for a while? It's almost like they don't even know what, what it was you said, but that, but when it happens, it's like, oh, you, you were talking about that, right? So here they are wanting to be, suddenly they want to be in your company or suddenly maybe, maybe something is happening to their home and they need to come and stay with you. Actually, that's what could be what's happening here. But like I said, symbolic those are symbols for energies and and ideas you see what i'm saying it's a more i want to say it's a more of a conceptual perceptual shift rather than an actual physical like physical earth changes or anything like that it's like the consciousness the mass consciousness of the earth is shifting okay so the nine of air in the home card coming next i want to say this is you kind of uh in a position of strength of course right but there's this idea of okay this is interesting as much as you may be aware of of this thing occurring this far out possibility actually manifesting your position is one of faith or trust trusting in the universe feeling almost invincible but not that nothing could happen to you personally, but that you trust your ability to navigate because you are centered and aligned. That's the thing. That's the beautiful thing about this slow and steady. This is not a fast moving energy. This is not a fast decision making or this is not a quick navigational process or discernment process. It's because you are steady that you have the ability to feel invincible, right? Because it's like you trust your instincts because nothing is swaying you. Nothing is pushing you out of balance. You're so in balance and integrated, right? It's interesting. I, I read this as a world card and this is the world card I believe too, right? So it's like you feel like you're in control of your world or your life because of your ability to, to stay maybe calm when bizarre things are occurring or big things are occurring, right? Because it's talking about that's your position, that's your home, that's your base, your home base is stability. Because you've made that choice, you've made a series of choices or actions in your past that have led you to the ability to hold steady, right? Okay, home base, your home base is like rock solid. But then we've got this energy here with the five of cups and the storm fields. This is where, like I said, storm and flood. Maybe because you've built your home on higher ground in a sense, right? It's like you're on the peak of this, this mountaintop. That's where you are residing. Maybe literally, physically, you, you are on higher ground because there's this energy here where it's like because of the storm, there is a flood. Because of the storm, there is a flood. 
It could be a storm of information. It could be a flurry of activity because something far out actually just landed in our reality. And it's, it's creating a lot of maybe just emotional overwhelm for a lot of people. It's, it's forcing, it's forcing your somebody, the one that is coming to be with you kind of out of their home base. You see what I'm saying? Out of their um, baseline emotion or their baseline perspective there it's forcing them out of their usual so it's not it's not talking about your home literally i don't believe it's talking about your usual perspective or state of mind or emotional state or expectation or beliefs whatever it is whatever is whatever is kind of flying through the realm is only kind of fortifying your position and it's in a sense weakening their position. It's causing them to, it's almost like there's nothing, you don't need to do anything. That's that's why, a part of the reason why you're so steady and stable is because it's not, it's not impacting you in the same way, right? It's like you're on higher ground. There's a storm, there's a flood, you're above it. It's not affecting you. There's nothing that you need to do. You don't need to change. It's like, you because you've already positioned yourself. You've already done everything that these ones have to do now in a flurry, right? And that's another reason why you've got slow and steady. It's like you maybe had years to prepare for this moment and they're having to deal with their inaction or their lack of choices now. They have to do it all now, right? They have to pick up all their stuff and move it to higher ground now, all at once. So they're in kind of a flurry of activity and you are this clear signal, stable alignment. So, and then the nine of earth coming next, this card talks to me about in this process, it's becoming clear to your person or the collective, your, your family, your broader collective, um, what is theirs and what is not theirs with the temptation card coming next. I often talk about this card as kind of clutter in the energetic field or in the the auric field, maybe just even in light, like stuff that is being carried around that it was kind of imposed or assigned or unconsciously gathered up. It's not beneficial. It's creating a really um, kind of cloudy filter to perceive reality through. Right? It's like having a dirty lens. But that's becoming apparent now. And it's like, in, it's almost, it's kind of like a ball and chain type energy. Suddenly there's a strong awareness of this ball and chain, which is the temptation card. Um, of all the stuff that doesn't belong to them. Maybe because there's kind of a rushed decision, a rushed decision making process. Like I was saying, you've had years to line up all of your choices and decisions or like use discernment to, to ensure actually that all of the things that you've surrounded yourself with are in alignment with this possibility, right? So you've made good choices. You have things around you that are useful in this moment. It's suddenly clear to them that all the stuff that they have gathered, it has no purpose in this moment. I can't think of an example. It's like they've got the wrong tools for the job kind of thing. They may have they may have an exceptional abundance of ideas, beliefs maybe, but it could be like actual physical things. None of it applies here. So it's like, and that becomes very clear to them that they were gathering the wrong things or they surrounded themselves with the wrong energies, things that didn't really... Uh, belong to them or that weren't beneficial to them that in this moment maybe only in this moment it becomes this anchoring ball and chain energy suddenly something that needs to be discarded does that make sense so and then with this slow and steady energy here it's kind of like it's got this idea this especially with this this it's like they want to come be with you, they wanna come stay at your place. And it's like, you're there, you're coming in because you can, because you have the resources or the the, the free time perhaps. 
So it's like you're you're arriving at their position, you're arriving in at their house in their life, you know, ready to help, offering strength, knowing kind of what to do next or what is needed next, right? It's like you're helping them kind of sift through all of this energy, this realization that maybe none of this stuff applies. So it isn't really needed for the next phase. Let's leave it here because there's this idea of that they're that they're moving in a sense. You're not. You're kind of staying put, and it's like you're bringing them into your life in a sense. So it's like they're they're vacating their position and they're moving into your position. In that process, it's like you're there to help them. It's like you showed up with the U-Haul. You showed up with the U-Haul and you're helping them kind of quickly sort through all of their. Uh, all of their potentially poor choices in the past. And there's, although for them, there may be a, an incredible sense of urgency, there's no urgency. It's like you are, that's, that's the biggest strength perhaps that you are bringing into this situation is this awareness that there's like no need to rush. It may be feeling to them like everything is all happening at once and it's overwhelming and it's too much. But from your perspective, you have the benefit of um, the, it's almost like a, it's almost like a leisurely energy, right? Partially because it's not, it's not your life that's being so drastically rewritten in a sense. Yours was rewritten over years. So anyway, that's the, that's the strength that you're bringing. Because when people are rushed or overwhelmed, they make bad decisions. So it's almost like you're here with your slow, steady awareness to help them make good decisions in this critical moment. You see what I'm saying? Because they're not capable. Because you can't really make a good decision in a frenzy. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're bringing your calm energy into the situation too. And that's why you're the navigator now. You're the, you're the driver of the of the U-Haul because you are focused. Okay, I'm gonna to continue to pull cards, create an extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description and if not, I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.